presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. Tampa has been home run happy this weekend at Target Field. Yesterday, all seven of their runs were the result of a long ball. And that afternoon, when the Rays launched four pitches out of the park. This afternoon, Tyler Duffy will try to limit his mistakes against a Tampa team that's hit seven homers in this series, ranks third in Major League Baseball in home runs. Drew Smiley will be on the mound for the Rays. He hopes to snap a three-game losing streak. On a beautiful day for baseball at Target Field, it's the Twins and Tampa in the series finale here in downtown Minneapolis. This Sunday's Rays and Twins game is presented by Super America. Get your Not Whole Kids Day vouchers at any local Super America. Welcome to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. Evan Longoria and the Rays have produced over half of their offense this season. Via the long ball, the Twins have gone about things a different way, Roy, behind a couple very hot bats of late. Yeah, they've got some guys really swinging the bats well, and it's really, really fun to uh, watch these uh, three guys, led by Eduardo Nunez, their uh, igniter now from the leadoff spot. He hits back through the ball, uses the whole field, and, of course, he has that blazing speed, which is really, really exciting to watch inside the parker being a culmination of the exciting streak for Eduardo Nunez. How about this guy Joe Maurer looking like the Joe Maurer of old swinging the bat very very well walking more striking out less and with his leg strength back and his vision back showing the power of the opposite field that made him an MVP candidate and perhaps the most exciting thing of all Byron Buxton now in the big, back in the big leagues with hitting mechanics that look like it give they give him a chance to be successful. We know about the blazing speed. He's now starting to put the ball in play with regularity. Coming up, Dick Bramer and Jack Morris discuss the challenges ahead today for the starters. Tyler Duffy for the Twins and the Rays. Drew Smiley both in need of a win this afternoon.
just slowing down. You know, I I could really feel it um, first sitting in Oakland, especially. Uh, you know, I was really pulling off on my left side. Um, you know, and it's I think it's just me trying to be better than I need to be. You know, just like you know that first start in Toronto. You know, just trying to do too much. Um, I think I was trying to do that a little bit. Um, you know, went out with Eddie and Raz today and just worked on slowing it down. Um, felt really good, and you know, we'll see what happens Sunday. And this afternoon in the series finale, Tyler Duffy will hope to get back on track, hope to pitch the Twins to a win in their hopes of getting a split in this four game series. A gorgeous Sunday afternoon here at Target Field. We're very glad you're with us for Twins Baseball. Dick Bramer along with Jack Morris. And when you have a young pitcher, young, talented pitcher like Tyler Duffy is, sometimes consistency is one of the last pieces of the puzzle. And it's going to take some time for him to understand that. But he's been good and he's been not so good. In his first few starts, he was very good. And partly because he had good body control, something that he just mentioned, and he had command because of that body control. In his last couple games, he struggled simply because he hasn't been able to locate. You can see that one he pulled down and away it got by the catcher and a couple balls left up and all over the plate lead to uh, some damage. So Tyler Duffy needs to try to get that consistency back. Now the guy he's going to have to worry about more than anybody is Evan Longoria. In his last three games here at Target Field he's home run hit home runs in all three games and uh, primarily because nobody's keeping him honest. You got to got to keep this guy off the plate a little bit. All three of those balls were left up and out over the plate and he's starting to reach out over there with no fear that anybody's going to come in on him. So the scouting report I would think for him would be keep him honest inside. You've got to show every hitter that you're willing to throw inside and then you're going to get that ball away and don't let him beat you. He's the one guy in the lineup swinging a pretty hot bat right now. And he is surrounded by some younger inexperienced and less uh, potent hitters. We'll see if Tyler Duffy can help take the twins to a victory here today as they hope to get a split and hope to put together a really good homestand.
great day it is to be taken out to the ball game. Tyler Duffy on the mound for the Twins. They started this homestand with a win Thursday, lost ball games Friday and Saturday. And a glorious Sunday afternoon here at Target Field. Kevin Cash has seen his Rays recover a little bit anyway from a very disappointing stretch through the end of May and into June, but now back to back wins over the Twins. A Menards batting order for the Rays. Mikey Matuk will lead things off, then Brad Miller, Evan Longoria, Logan Morris, and Steve Pierce. Corey Dickerson, Steven Souza Jr., Hank Conger, and Tim Beckham. And they'll be facing the right hander, Tyler Duffy, making his eighth start of the season. Last uh, time out, he only went four and two thirds inning. He allowed five hits in a season high tens, uh, 10 hits, excuse me, he allowed five runs. Uh, Tyler just understands this game so well, and he realizes that he's got to work ahead in the count, try to have a little better command. He's got a tough uh, go today, but I think he's going to be up to the task. Northland for defense for the Twins. He's become a fixture in left field. Robbie Grossman's out there again today. Byron Buxton in center. Max Kepler in right. Eduardo's on the left side of the infield. Nunez in third. Escobar at short. Dozier and Park on the right side. Joe Mauer DHing and Kurt Suzuki behind the play. Will Little will call balls and strikes. Ted Barrett, Lance Barksdale, Angel Hernandez on the bases. Twins have an off day tomorrow and. Paul Molitor said all the predictable things about today's game. He'd really like to win today to fully enjoy the off day tomorrow. Well, we're going to enjoy the weather for today oh, and uh, hopefully the rest of the week it's going to start heating up. But yeah, the Twins need to get right back on track after a couple clunkers here the last couple of days. It's supposed to be steamy this weekend yeah. for the games here. Temperatures in the low 90s, but absolutely perfect. Wind blowing in from right field, a few puffy white clouds and we're very happy again that you're with us for Twins baseball. First pitch, a swing and a miss by Mato. Mentioned in the open that uh, obviously the big bat in the middle, Longoria, needs to be dealt with carefully, but Mato hitting just you know, a little over 100. A lot of other hitters hitting around 200 just off the plate, one and one. So if you go into a game or a series and you say, hey, we don't want that guy to beat you. Uh, you know the Rays the twins have some options in this Ray lineup that they can attack. Yeah, so we're gonna miss. This is one of the guys. Uh, Brad Miller has not really ever been a whole lot of threat. He's got good speed on the base pass, but Evan Longoria and Logan Morrison, the three four hitters, are the two guys that you're kind of gonna be careful with, especially what they've done here in this series. And a good start for Duffy as he reaches back with a fastball and strikes out Mato one away. Well, he just climbed the ladder right there and got him to swing out of the zone, but good to see him working ahead in the count. You know what uh, what Duffy said and Paul Molitor said and Eric Rasmussen all said about Duffy's last start against Oakland. He didn't have much fastball command. Now, if you were going to scout Duffy, and he made a start against the Rays last year, but you know he's not a known commodity yet. But the first thing I would think you would hear about him or see about him is his breaking ball. And so here in the first at bat at least trying to establish the fastball you make a good point and, and quite honestly that's the pitch that everybody knows him as he's got two good breaking balls slider and a curveball can change speeds but he still throws more fastballs than breaking balls and that's why they're talking about locating that fastball and a ground ball to second and out number two. Gloria really never had done much against the Twins here, but he certainly has had a great series, and you can see for the season where you should and should not pitch him. And the Twins have not done a very good job of that. Funny that the heart of the plate, right over the middle, is the one that they have the most trouble with. Avoid that part, would you, Duff? <laughs> and that's where the pitches have been thrown generally for the three home run balls. And a strike over the inside corner and that elicits a glare from Longoria back to Will Little. One strike. Think about working inside, and I know Bert said it a lot. I, I talk about it all the time. Within and at bat, you have to do it more than once. It doesn't always have to be backed up back to back pitches, but. Don't be afraid to go in there a couple times in one at bat because that's what really sets the you know the, the memory in the in the hitters mind uh, that he's got this pitch and he, he's not afraid to come in here. 
Breaking ball tapped foul two and two. Now when you say come in do you mean like pitch one to Longoria getting a strike or in off the plate. Well in this case he gets strike one on a fastball in right that's in the strike zone. Now you can run one off the plate in. Pretty much let him know I want that part of the plate. Then you can go away you can come back in again. But uh, you know as long as you're ahead in the count you have a pitch to waste. You're going to waste it waste it in. Or throw that one right there. Two strikeouts in an 11 pitch one two three first for Tyler Duffy. Just some cheese away got it up a little bit and uh, maybe that fastball had something to do with it. to pull out a win. The Menards batting order for the Twins. Eduardo Nunez leading things off. Playing third base today. Trevor Plouffe not in the lineup. Then Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer, Young Ho Park, Robbie Grossman, Eduardo Escobar, Max Kepler, Kurt Suzuki, and Byron Buxton. Twins will be facing left-hander Drew Smiley. He's making his 12th start. He's had trouble this year. His record only at two and seven. And uh, he's coming off one of his shortest starts since uh, last year in August. He had a career high of eight runs given up on 12 hits. And in the month of May, he went one and four with a 7.18 ERA. So, might be a good time to get Drew Smiley. And Eduardo Nunez will lead things off. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. Nunez, Dozier, and Maurer. Had a couple of early leads in the ball game yesterday. Toyota key stat. Eduardo Nunez beginning play today, fourth in the American League in the batting race. And as Paul Molitor said, he didn't think coming out of spring training he would be looking for opportunities to give Eduardo Nunez a day off. <laughs> but that's the reality. He's been hitting the ball so well. He's been in the lineup pretty much every day for the last five, six weeks. And Eduardo Escobar has had trouble getting in the lineup yeah. because of that. Three and one now to Nunez. Of course, he doesn't walk much. Smiley in danger of issuing a free pass. That's flared down the right field line. It'll reach the seats. Nunez with 178 at bats and just six walks. It's been a while since we've watched a Twins game that started in the first inning and they had a breather of the whole game because they played solid and got a bunch of runs. It looks like maybe today might be the day. 3 2 pitch line to left and Nunez is aboard with incredibly his 60th hit of the season. Tyler, That'll bring up Brian Dozier. Tyler Duffy comes out and throws a 1 2 3 inning and our leadoff man gets on base. The Rays out in the field brought to you by Northland Ford. Corey Dickerson in left, Mikey Matuk in center, Stephen Souza Jr. in right. Brandon Geyer put on the disabled list today. Longoria, Miller, Beckham, and Morrison, the infielders, Conger behind the plate. Here's Dozier. And off the plate outside, ball one.
Dozier's batting average climbing incrementally over the last week or so. Oh, Nunez started uh, toward second base. Smiley's got a really good pickoff. He's picked off 12 batters in the last two and a half years. 12 runners, I should say. And he almost got Nunez there. And there he goes. He got a good read, and Conger, who's had problems throwing out runners, doesn't even throw the ball. A little bit of a double clutch there. The Twins hope to do some running, and the Rays hope that Smiley's pickoff move will deter that. But on the second pitch, Nunez swipes second. Very good jump by Nunez, and the fact that Brian Dozier swung through the ball, I think that kind of locked up Hank Conger with there. He just chose not to throw it at all. Nunez keeps accelerating as he approaches second base, so that's always making it tough for the catcher. 19th steal against Conger in 21 tries. And now Dozier takes down and away, two and one. We saw the beginning of a potential big inning for the Twins, and where they've fallen short so often this year is it's just a runner at second, nobody out. But they've had situations like this and managed to get the minimum amount of a run production. We'll see what Dozier can get done here. Well, he needs to get Nunez over to third base some way, somehow. Give yourself up if you have to make contact. Ideally. Even though they're not pull shifting him right now, get the ball to the right side. And now a three ball count to Dozier. It's so obvious that everybody's pitching him away. This is a great example of you don't have to hit a ball out of the ballpark. You don't have to do anything. Just hit a ground ball to the right side. Let's move the runner over to third and have a runner 90 feet away with only one out. Take strike two. It was full count to Nunez. Now it's full count to Dozier. And foul tip. Dozier strikes out one away. Three steals for the Twins yesterday against Conger and the pitcher on the mound, but Conger's throwout rate is very poor. And the Twins have some guys like Nunez, Dozier, to a lesser extent, Grossman. Kepler could steal, and certainly Buxton could, so we'll see how many stolen bases they rack up today. We were talking about in the pregame show, Roy Smalley out there, talking about how Paul Mauder is starting to show a little influence in getting guys started sometimes, especially early in the game. And it's good to see Nunez hitting the ball all over because he's one of the guys that will run, not afraid to steal a base. Dancing off of second base as if he might take off for third, and Maurer takes ball one. Twins haven't done very well uh, against left handers, although they've seen uh, quite a few of them in the past week. Foul, one and one. Joe's average, as you saw, 282, and it's 261 against lefties. Pretty good pitch right there from Drew Smiley. Located that breaking ball down and away, the perfect quadrant. One and one, the Mauer. Missing the inside corner with a fastball. We talk about Joe quite often here on the pregame shows, but uh, he has been putting the ball in play and getting his base hits on a regular basis. Be good today to see him pick up an RBI early in this ball game. Miss on a breaking ball and it's two and two. Big sweeping curveball from Drew Smiley. The first strike was a breaking ball, but that one even had more bend to it. See how far that ball just sweeps across down and away. And a roller 
through the left side a base hit. Nunez will score and Maurer drives in the first run of the game. Well, just what the doctor ordered right there. Joe Maurer gets a very hittable pitch. Smiley made a mistake right down the middle and Joe inside outed it. Shot the ball to left field. Nunez with his good speed scores easily so the Twins are on the board first. See this pitch right here. Fastball that just tails right over the inner third of the plate. And Joe with a classic swing leads with his hand shoots the ball the other way. So one nothing twins and now Byung Ho Park. Strike over the inside corner. Park with a three hit game the other night in at first base today. Miss 0 and 2. Now the strikeouts are very high. Park struck out a lot in South Korea too. He's drawn 17 walks. His on base percentage is 310. The league average is 320. And he's gone about three weeks now since his last home run. Two strikes. Three strikes. Two away, and that'll bring up Grossman. For some reason, Park's had trouble with left handers too. And you just don't quite figure that one out that ball let's watch this last pitch in the location of it nothing really special about it I mean that's a very hittable pitch but Park must not pick it up very well came into the game hitting just 207 against lefties and yet to hit a home run against a lefty and that's the most surprising thing he's got nine home runs and they've all been against righties it's Grossman and he takes low ball one Talking with Paul Molitor today about Grossman and his the impact that he's had and any surprises and Paul said if anything he's been more effective left handed than the twins thought he might be but he still has been a much better right handed batter than left handed this one hooked down the line it'll be a foul ball hitting 250 as a left handed batter and now from this side of the plate 429. Total, we're you know talking about if this isn't at bat, this is just his 50th. Yeah. Well, Robbie Grossman has admitted that he feels more comfortable from the right side. He feels he's a natural right-handed hitter, and he's had to learn the discipline and the whole mechanical thing from the left side. Time called at the plate. Again, paraphrasing the manager, he says, "Hey, what's not to like? This guy's a switch hitter. He's, he's got good baseball intellect. He's hit certainly. Played okay out in left field. Seems to know where to be on the field. Decent base runner. And he's making things happen. I mean, all those things. Yeah, he's in the lineup every day because of that. Doing one." That's the changeup right there from Drew Smiley, and that is one of his better pitches when he's got that working. It's almost like a lot of guys will go to a high fastball. Some guys with good breaking balls are a breaking ball pitcher. They'll try to trick you or fool you when they're ahead with a breaking ball. Well, his goal to pitch has always been a changeup. Just missed the inside corner with a fastball. Three and two. And Maurer will take off from first. Morrison will continue to hold. Bauer. And another one inside. A walk will send Mauer to second and bring up Escobar with two men on. Situations like this are what I'm talking about, Jack. All right, the Twins have one, but if they can get a good at bat a productive at bat here out of Escobar you can put up that crooked number that the twins have been so desperate for quick trip to the mound from catcher Hank 
Conger. Well that's just it you know one run in the first inning it's nice but three is a lot nicer it kind of <laughs> takes a lot more out of their sails and you know a team has a tendency to not battle as much when they're trailing by multi runs and the twins just haven't done that a lot I think Tyler Duffy's anxious to get back out there but all pitchers will take all the time in the world as long as the boys are putting points on the board. Escobar might be that guy. He's had great history against Smiley. Swing and a miss. Generally, Escobar has been a much better left hand, right handed batter than left, 345 to 227. But against Smiley, Escobar is four for six with two home runs. Well, Smiley. So you knew he was going to yeah. play today. Smiley struggling here in the first inning. This be his 28th pitch. And this is, you know, he struggled the whole month of May. It's a good time to just pounce on him and get him out of the game. We're talking about those early crooked numbers, we've seen it go the other way, Absolutely. haven't we? With Phil Hughes and other twin starters uh, struggling, and the big number gets put up early, and it's just it's tough for any lineup this side of the Boston Red Sox to cover up an early three four run deficit. Well, the Twins have done a pretty decent job of fighting back and staying in games, but. When you're down four or five early, you may never catch up. You're just lucky to get back in the game. Two strikes to Escobar. And a changeup got him. And that will end the first inning. A couple of hits and a walk to the game's first run. It's one nothing quick. Of his struggles last three starts ERA nearly eight and a half he mentioned to me that he felt a lot lately like he did in that first start at Toronto where he's trying to do too much when I asked Paul Mauder the manager he said he needs to sit down and watch what Ricky Nolasco has been able to do his last couple starts specifically here Friday against Tampa establishing the fastball as Jack Morris talked about being aggressive with the fastball in Paul Mauder's mind if he can do that establish the fastball he knows how good his breaking balls will be and they'll be far more effective great start in the first half inning guys against uh, Tampa Bay let's see if he can build off that here the rest of the way. Well, thank you Kevin Logan Morrison leading things off he's been swinging it well for the Rays too. We've seen over the last week or so so often when the twins have scored the other guys have scored right away. We'll see if Duffy can put up another zero maybe have another quick one two three inning in the second. Want to know to Morrison then Pearson Dickerson. There's a high fly to right field retreating as Kepler and that ball is gone and Morrison has hit another home run and the game just that quick. Is tied at one. Well, we just talked about it. How you got to be careful with Longoria and Morrison. Uh, Longoria has hit three home runs, and now Morrison has hit three home runs. And sometimes easier said than done. You know, you've got a one-run lead, and you don't want to put the leadoff man on. But you know, be careful with this guy. You now look where the pitch is. There's not too many guys that won't have a pretty good swing on a pitch right there. It into the area in right field, one apiece, and now a pop up 
near the Twins dugout. Park watches it spin back and out of play. One strike. The Rays got all seven of their runs yesterday on home runs. And we know many of you weren't able to see the completion of the telecast last night after the rain delay, and we'll try to explain that and not point fingers but absolve people of uh, responsibility. There's a, a strike. The game, of course, was on FS1, at least the start of the game was, and then they intended on switching it over to uh, Fox Sports North Plus. And the problem rested with DirecTV's policy. Now, if you were on a cable affiliate, you got the game, no problem. But a lot of viewers, including me, were waiting for the resumption of the game that never came because DirecTV's policy doesn't allow for switching events from one channel to another within uh, the uh, event being played. So we understand the frustration, but it wasn't the fault of Fox Sports North, Fox Sports One, or the Minnesota Twins. One and two to Steve Pierce. Pierce has been swinging it pretty good. He's had a bad elbow, unable to do much throwing, so he's the designated hitter for the Rays. And in the dirt, two and two. Tyler Duffy just needs to start all over. Get this guy. This is the leadoff man in his mind right now. A busted bat looper to left, a base hit for Pierce, and that'll bring up Dickerson. Still a couple of hits to start the second inning. Today's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And the Twins have just eight wins from their starting pitchers, and the Braves, who have the same record as the Twins, have nine. And uh, there are a lot of different ways to cut and slice the poor. Season the Twins are having, but uh, that's not a bad way, a place to start when you have well, two months into the season and just eight wins from your starters. It's a pet peeve of mine because that is the cold hard facts that the uh, starters just haven't either caught a break when the Twins needed them to score. They pitched their best games when the offense couldn't show up for many of those, but to have only eight wins from the starting staff and we're well, we're into the second month by uh, almost a week already. Uh, again, yeah, third, the third month. Yeah. One and zero oh to Dickerson. Duffy didn't even start the year in the rotation with the big league club, and he is tied for the team lead with two, along with Nolasco. Well, again, we can talk about Ricky's last start. Pitched a whale of a game. Just uh, could get a break. We talk about how you've got to have all aspects of the game working, and just not a lot of run support in that game. He pitched well his last start. That is a foul ball with the runner going. It'll be 1 2 to Dickerson when we resume play. Talk about game management all the time. This is already a part of the game where Tyler Duffy, now working out of the stretch, needs to uh, start getting some game management. He could use a ground ball here, maybe get a double play, but back to back hits, and he's in a little bit of trouble already. Breaking ball line to the shortstop and Escobar bluffs the throw across a bullet and Escobar was positioned perfectly one away and that'll bring up Susan. The Twins flex plan gives you the flexibility to choose your games and your number of seats. You can choose in advance even the day of the game. So don't plan flex plan go to twinsbaseball.com slash flex or call 833 twins to learn more. Steven Souza Jr. With one in, one on, and one out. And one home run in yesterday's game that made a difference. A big one with two men aboard. Hammered one into the second level here. Fouled back, and that got a piece of home plate umpire Will Little. Looks like it went over Suzuki's left shoulder and got the home plate umpire. Off the mask, and then it got the home plate umpire. Now, I don't think Kurt Suzuki would want to trade places with Will Little right now. 
it's amazing that umpires and we've talked about this before you just saw how exposed little was the catcher providing no protection to the umpire at all given where they were lined up to this day I'm still baffled a little bit about the old balloon type chest protector and how the umpires for generations were able to use that and make calls behind the plate and so much more protection American League only right yeah. the National and, League didn't and, do that I know it's more comfortable to wear the stuff they're wearing without the fall balls right but my goodness basically they're trying to get the I, protection I'd bring, I'd bring a foam mattress up there if I could <laughs> but then where they where they're taught to position themselves now over the inside corner and then always you know I guess kind of guessing on the outside corner now if Suzuki sets up outside look how exposed the home plate umpire is well and that's another re I mean you bring up another whole point that's you're not related to that at all is the umpires typically set up in the inside you know most pitchers throw outside across the whole plate how are they going to see whether it's a strike or ball they should never miss a ball on the inner half of the plate that's where they're sitting one and two to Sousa grounder foul well here I'm I'm bringing up a matter of personal protection and you're arguing about balls and strikes <laughs> well and your point is <laughs> <laughs> But you know just for safety's sake now Suzuki sets up outside umpires ought to be able because yeah, they shift, do it to left handed batters outside corner yeah right, outside part of his and body then guess on the inside corner if you, you see how to. exposed he is right there just naturally standing there. And now inside and Duffy intentionally or not is yep. moves Souza off the plate a little bit twice in this at bat that's a good pitch right there you see how much tail it has he did not hit anybody that's what Roy and I were talking about in the pregame. Show that pitch right there once or twice early in the game and do it to a few batters so they all know you're willing to come in there. Now a fastball up high. That wasn't a bad pitch either. He tried to get him to chase up. And Souza had a tough time laying off, but he did. Good job for Souza Jr. right there. We think of Duffy's strikeout pitch as being a breaking ball, but he struck out Matuk and Longoria in the first inning with fastballs. See if he goes to the breaking ball here. I think it's natural for young pitchers to kind of hurry things up when things start falling apart. Or I think Tyler Duffy just needs to slow everything down right here. Focus on his release point and his body control. Runner goes on a towering fly foul down the left field line. And back what I was trying to say right there with the result he rushed his lower body his arm stayed too far back and that ball stayed up in the zone because of that and Tyler Duffy slows down and keeps his back leg over the rubber just a fraction of a second longer he's able to locate that breaking ball out in front of his body and it's going to be down further in the zone and he'll have a better result Pierce goes again and the pitch is up high the throw is unnecessary now they're going to well, he was he's, he called it a strike. He called it a strike yeah. and then they called uh, interference on the batter Souza for interfering with Suzuki's throw. Well, he's out anyway. Either way he's out. Well, but the runner's out. Right, but he was thrown, he's going to be thrown out. He did interfere. But see, he's still out.
to end the pitch looked like it was a strike we had Fox tracks declaring it so. So there's strike three the second out and then in thinking that it was ball four. The batter Souza stepped on the plate interfering with Suzuki's throw. And so Pierce was caught stealing. Well I guess I'm assuming they called interference he was tagged out at second base anyway. And like Paul Harvey said the rest of the story was the manager Kevin Cash was thrown out because he was arguing balls and strikes he right. thought that ball was up and that's why Suzo started going towards first base was caused the interference which really didn't matter because he was thrown out anyway. Kepler the batter 2 0 count. And now 3 and 0. Cash yelling saying that ball was up that was high. And then Will Little who already had a tough inning <laughs> with the foul ball. Uh, you can understand given where the foul ball hit him that he not the longest uh, in terms of patience so he threw cash out and then Kepler now draws a four pitch walk to start the second inning. Oh good start again to the twin second inning lead off walk Max Kepler with pretty good speed on the base pass. We'll see if maybe Paul Molitor will get him going with Kurt Suzuki coming up. That looked like Kevin Cash so maybe someone else was ejected. Here is Kurt Suzuki maybe Longoria got tossed. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks a lot like him at third base right now. <laughs> Derek Shelton. Derek Shelton was the one who did toss, so I apologize about that. I thought it was Kevin Cash. And a first pitch strike to Suzuki. Kepler drawing the walk, his third walk. There have been 11 strikeouts in 28 at bats. Suzuki three for five in his matchups with Smiley. Now that's not his good move. That was not intended, I don't think, to pick him off. But there is a better move that he's already shown. He showed it to Nunez in the first inning. Now Kepler runs okay and can steal a base. But again, given the issues that Conger has had behind the plate, marginal stolen base candidates might be more apt to go than ever. One of the things that a lot of young base runners are taught is you're going on first move. Well, a good left hander has the ability to pause at the top of his stretch and still throw the ball to first base. So that's what makes Smiley more effective than a lot of guys in pickoffs is he'll show that. What you called uh, his not good move. This is natural throw over to first. And then he'll pause too. Suzuki on a check swing is out on strike. And that'll bring up Buxton. Seven hits in his last 19 at bat. Certainly an encouraging stat for Buxton since his recall. Yeah, Byron Buxton has done a good job since coming back, making contact. And with his speed, that's one of the main. Things he needed to work on. Put the ball in play. Let your God given talent take over. Look at that speed. Look and at he'll that. get a bunt hit, pushing a bunt up the line. Looked like Smiley might have had time. At least he got to the ball quickly enough. Well, he'd have to turn and spin, though. He's not going to, I mean, unless he can just backhand the ball, which is hard to do when you run in full blast. And we get to watch it again here. Watch how quickly Smiley gets off the mound. Does a good job of getting to the ball, but he's going to have to turn. Either all the way around, and that he's not going to have time to do that. So he would have had to pick it up and backhand it, yeah. which is what he was intending to do, and then never watch the ball when he transferred it from his glove hand to his throwing hand. So the rookies are on base here in the second inning with the Twins trying to get their a second lead of the ball game. Nunez singled, stole a base, and scored in the first. Will play grounder. Bobbled it short, and everybody safe. Miller with another error. He committed one yesterday early in the ball game, 
And a veteran shortstop on a tailor made double play grounder boots it. Well you're getting you're eliminating some serious speed if you just make this play. And it's quite obvious that it would have been you can never assume a double play but I'm sure that would have been had he got rid of the ball. The key spot yesterday Nunez hit the same ground ball and it was turned into a double play. What a committing his ninth error of the year. And now they're loaded for Dozier. And the twins have been what was the word we used the other day in bases loaded less than two out situation dreadful. That's it still applies. Here's the situation here Dozier if he can hit a double three run score and there's just been so little production out of situations like this. Swing and a foul one and one. Well that's your typical Brian Dozier swing right there. That's part of the problem. That swing right there pulling off the ball trying to hit a home run to left field on a ball that's away. You don't have to swing that hard. You just have to put the ball in play. You're going to score at least one run. Nobody's out. Bases are loaded. Conger with a block, two and one. Get an RBI anyway. I mean, if you want to give up an RBI and at bat, you get an RBI. That's a pretty good exchange. Twin scored one and had. Smiley under the heat in the first inning and now again here in the second. Base is loaded, one out. Popped up. And field fly rule will be called. Two down. And that's the first out recorded that wasn't a strikeout for Drew Smiley. And that'll leave it up to Maurer. Mauer drove in the first inning run with a single to left. Rays had a, a shift on for Joe with the shortstop Miller playing pretty much up the middle. And Joe hit a, about a seven hopper through the left side of the infield. Last two weeks, a 356 average. The overall season average up to 286. I could really use another one here. He got a big hit in the first inning. Outside ball one. So an interesting conversation there while we were watching Joe Maurer and his numbers recently. Evan Longoria came up to Smiley. They had a conversation. Now he's playing well off the line, which typically they don't shift Joe Maurer that way. So I think he was trying to trying to tell him, look at the pitch on the inner half. And the first pitch was thrown away, and that one was thrown away. So I don't quite get what that conversation is. A big spot here for the Twins, who have been given an extra out here, extra two outs, really, if you assume that Nunez's ground ball would have ended the inning. And the Twins, when they've made mistakes, the other team seems to pounce on them. We'll see if Maurer can come through with a two out hit. It's a strike and it's one and two. That was a pitch. I'm sure Joe was looking for the breaking ball right there because that was a fastball that Joe can handle, no question. But he was looking, I think, for the breaking ball. He had two strikes in the first inning when he got a base hit to left on a fastball. And blocked by Conger and it's two and two. Bauer started the game with a 388 on base percentage. That was seventh in the American League. 34 walks, tied for third in the American League. Two and two. High fastball got him. And the Twins again fill the bases but can't score. They've left five men on through two innings.
Link. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Tied at one on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at Target Field. Onto the third. Hank Conger will lead things off against Tyler Duff. Breaking ball over and strike one. Well, Conger got it going yesterday for the Tampa Bay Rays. Irvin Santana was getting people out left and right, and then he hit a home run to break up that little streak he had going. One and one. Conger, Beckham, and Mata. Hitting 208, 190, and 109. One and two. This is a raised team that, as we said, both Thursday night and Friday night, they live and die with a home run. Second to the Mariners in terms of home runs hit. Yeah, they're not a team to go base to base with base hits, walks, base hits, that kind of thing. Conger strikes out. One away. Fourth strikeout already for Tyler Duffy. That on the breaking ball. Sanford Health injury report. Brandon Geyer had been struggling and uh, is uh, now on the disabled list on left hamstring strain. And uh, Nick Franklin called up from a AAA. Twins have an off day tomorrow, and the Rays go to Arizona to play the Diamondbacks. Tim Beckham, the second baseman. Outside, ball one. Twins will host the Marlins here on Tuesday night, the first of a three game series, all three night games. Beckham playing second base. Taylor Motter started the first two games at second base. But Beckham get the chance to play here today. Two and oh. Swing and a miss. We've seen Duffy here this afternoon, Jack, get more swings and misses. On his up, fastball. Up in the zone. And that might be something good for him to see that he can do that, that he can use a different pitch besides his breaking ball to get swings and misses. Might build some confidence. Great location of that fastball right there. Just sort of a half swing, but it's because of where that pitch was located. See Suzuki's glove. Just perfect dot in the eye right there. Four strikeouts, three on strike threes have come on three fastballs and one breaking ball. And another fastball and another strikeout. Two down quickly here in the third. That'll bring up Mato. It, it certainly looks like Tyler Duffy has a lot more confidence today with locating that fastball, and that's good. I think that's something he needs to do, especially here. We're in the third inning. You do it early in the game, and it'll open up that breaking ball for the middle to later innings of the game. But just like Drew Smiley, that's Tyler Duffy's fifth strikeout already. Montuk struck out swinging his first time up. Breaking ball in the dirt. Ball one. Chance now to see Buxton and Kepler position players who figure to be part of the Twins' future. Duffy might very well evolve, and there's another foul ball off the mask of Suzuki. Duffy, it is hoped, might very well evolve into kind of a rock or a nucleus of a good Twins rotation. They've already seen some very encouraging signs. From him, particularly last year when the games were so important, start after start after start, Twins were in the pennant race and he kept delivering. Well, he has an, an ingredient that very few guys have, and that's he's hungry. He he goes out there with a 
with an intent. He's mad at himself right now because he realizes he just left that ball over the plate with a couple strikes. And that's the difference in Duffy. He he wants to be better. He expects to be perfect. And nobody can be, but he's never content with uh, with getting a result from a mistake. And you can see that pitch left over the middle of the plate. And he's not too happy. I've told you for years I've really enjoyed your Sunday morning uh, interview show with uh, Paul Molitor and we're very happy to be bringing you segments of that now in our pregame show on Sundays. But I thought it was illuminating uh, today to hear Paul talk about start a few games ago Duffy had six shutout innings and he came in off the field after every half inning muttering to himself <laughs> he was upset and he had six shutout innings yeah. going. And I think well the question was really asked you know is Paul worried about those kind of things. And Chris Atterbury asked the question. Paul's answer was, "No, I'm not really." And I think as long as you're able to control your emotions, you know, you can you can show frustration, you can vent, but you have to have focus on the very next pitch. And I think Tyler does a pretty good job of that. And he gets a quick third out after all. Gave up the base hit, no harm, no foul. Bottom of the third coming up in a 1-1 game. Young Ho Park will lead things off for the Twins. Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. What's yours? Drew Smiley has faced 12 batters and retired half of them. One has scored, five have been left. Young Ho Park will lead off the third. Up and away, ball one. Park struck out on a fastball in the first inning, and you know it seemed like an imminently hittable pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. And the Twins would love to see Park put the ball in play more. 162 at bats, and now 57 strikeouts. There's a high drive to left field. He didn't put it in play. He put it out of play. Home run number 10, and it put the Twins back in front two to one. Well, Dick, you were talking about his first at bat that it's been quite a dry spell between home runs, and there he gets a pitch. And you know, like Miguel Sano, Park is one of those guys that you know at any given swing he's got the potential to drive the ball out of the ballpark. There he met that fastball right out over the plate, got a good swing, pitches up in the zone, and up and out of here, upper deck shot. So Park with a home run, his first home run since May 13th, and it'll bring up Robbie Grossman who drew a walk in the first. It'll be a little sense of relief for Park just to drive the ball like that. This one tattooed to left center field, hit deep toward the bullpen area, and gone a home run 
for Grossman. To back home runs and the Twins lead three to one. And for Smiley, the 13th and 14th home runs allowed this year. Well, that's just it. Drew Smiley is allowed five home runs in his last three starts, and now. Seven home runs in four starts. Ball one to Escobar. Two and O. Oh. Smiley survived the first two innings, giving up just one run, but the Twins clearly should have had more. And now a couple of home runs to start the third inning. And Escobar takes a strike two and one. Yeah, they had him on the ropes. You talked about the fact the Twins have already left five men on base over two first two innings, including the bases loaded here in the second inning. And that's a foul ball that got Conger. Two and two. Nobody out in the third inning, 56 pitches, so you just have a feeling that it's going to be. A short day for Drew Smiley either way. Driven foul down the right field line. It's interesting Escobar has emerged over the last couple of years as a regular player because of injury or failures of others. And now he's almost found himself on the other side of the coin because as you said Nunez has hit so well he's become the everyday shortstop. And that of course means less time for Escobar who strikes out again out number one in the inning. Well, Smiley's got him a couple times on off speed pitches. Escobar just, and that's a timing thing for, for uh, Eduardo Escobar. Here's the home run that Drew Smiley hit. It looked like a breaking ball that stayed up. And another good swing for Robbie Grossman. What's there not to like? And that was a long blast to the back wall of the bullpen. Here's Kepler looping one toward left. Dickerson comes in a few steps. Kepler quickly retired out number two. And that'll bring us to Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki struck out on a check swing in the second inning. Touch for a couple of solo home runs here in the third. And now Suzuki takes low, ball one. Overall, the Ray starting rotation has been a disappointment. Smiley, of course, the big piece coming back to Tampa Bay in the David Price trade last year, fouled back as the Rays were looking for a left hander with some big league experience, some big league success. Archer's had a disappointing start to his season. Generally, the Rays are below 500. Not because the lineup hasn't produced, they've certainly got plenty of power, but because the starting pitching has been disappointing this year. Two and one. Here's Smiley originally signed by the Detroit Tigers. And I think the Tigers thought that he'd be a part of their organization for quite some time. He was doing a good job out of the bullpen when he first started seeing regular work. Three and one with Buxton on deck. Drill to center. And a base hit, a solid single for Suzuki, and that'll get Buxton to the plate. Everything that's been hit here, with the exception of Kepler's fly ball, has been hit hard. Biggest issue for Byron Buxton has been hitting left handed pitching. Coming into the game today, he was six for 60 against lefties, this is including last year, with 28 strikeouts. You see his numbers against righties, and they're not great, but they're okay. But for some reason, Buxton has had a terrible time against left handed pitching. 
Got a bunt single against Smiley in the second. My only explanation, you were asking me about what I thought the reason for that was, and my only explanation is the fact that some guys, I think at a young age, have not been exposed to left handers that much. Byron's been a right handed hitter his whole life. And the ball, the breaking ball, the one that comes into him, is something they don't pick up as well as a ball that's going away from him. I think the fastball they see as well from both sides. But it's that breaking ball that comes in on him that he's just not being able to get the barrel of the bat to early enough because it comes in on his hands. Prior to the bunt single, he was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts against Smiley. Driven deep to the right field corner. High off the wall and over the glove of Souza. Suzuki coming around. He'll score, and Buxton will be stopped at third. Well, once that ball came ricocheted off the wall and got past Souza, there was no question that Buxton was going to try for three. I think Kurt Suzuki read it well right from the get go, and he was able to round third and score easily also. So, Twins have got a multi run inning here, a crooked number in the third. See this ball, good extension. High off the wall there, and once it bounces and hops over Souza's glove, Buxton's going to stand on third for sure. The real question was whether whether or not Gene Glenn was going to let him go home, or as you pointed out the other night, whether he was going to pass Suzuki. Yeah. <laughs> Very same situation you talked about yeah. the other night. Now here's Nunez. Nunez. Has reached both times a single and a run scored in the first and he reached on a Miller error in the second and the shame of that inning is Miller uh, could very easily have started a double play that would have ended the inning and the twins had the bases loaded one out and didn't get one run home Dozier popped up and Maurer struck out inside and it's one and one. Nunez a pretty good contact hitter here. Let's see if he can maybe pick up an RBI himself. Nice pickup wow. by Longoria. Man, he is so smooth at third. Makes a fine play to end the inning, but the Twins with a pair of home runs, a single, a triple, a three-run third to lead four to one. And you venture to the Brainerd Lakes area, located at the very heart of the state. Brainerd embodies the 10,000 plus lakes mentality of the whole state with all the summer activities that are only possible here. Best in the Midwest rated golf courses allow you to prepare your golf game, relax, and practice before the Ryder Cup this summer. Endless ideas are there for, it, uh, for the perfect getaway at ExploreMinnesota.com. Share your favorites with hashtag only in MN. I had a bunch of people today ask me, Jack, what. I did with the 
my off day yesterday. Did I go fishing? I didn't, but I took a step in the right direction. I got my fishing license yesterday. Does that count? <laughs> Yeah, that is a step. I mean, that step should have happened well before the <laughs> opener. But. How about you? Did you get out and fight? Uh, Not yesterday, yeah. no. But I was looking at that uh, picture of Minnesota, of the Rainier Lakes area, and I was wondering if Mr. Blyleman has been teeing him up, and what do you do with that water hazard in front of him? Yeah. At least a, one sleeve of balls. <laughs> at least one. We'll have to ask him when he gets back. He'll be back on the air Tuesday night. Evan Longoria struck out his first time up on a fastball. Now Duffy is ahead of him one and two. Then Morrison and Pierce. And again the necessity or the desire. To put a zero up after your team has yep. given you a lead. Second yeah. second opportunity here he, uh, Tyler Duffy, Duffy has to hold a lead now. This one a little bit bigger lead. Three run lead. Fastball off the plate. He talked uh, in our pregame show, in an interview we taped, obviously, about he felt in his last start in Oakland he was opening up his left side and doing a lot of that, pulling yep. pitches off the plate. And a foul ball. What he needs to do is straighten him up again, throw that ball in the inner half, let it run, and then he can go away. Carsoup.com trivia who is the only player to hit a home run? Against Minnesota in each game of a four game series. Baptista. <laughs> That's a pretty good guess. <laughs> I don't know. Just off the plate, and it's a leadoff walk. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm, I'm going to split my answer because I know they each had consecutive home run streaks that uh, carried through a twin series Don Mattingly or Ken Griffey Jr. So I'm, I'll, I'll not answer one Tuesday night, but I'm going to take two answers tonight. Lead off walk to Longoria and that'll bring up Morrison who's been about as dangerous as Longoria yeah. has been in this series. Down and away ball one. It's good that you noticed something that I'm seeing quite clearly right now and that is Tyler Duffy's rushing with his lower body He's starting to jump at the plate a little bit. Sometimes that's a strength of anxiousness or a sign of anxiousness, but most of the time that's a sign that your legs are starting to get tired and you start compensating for it. And he's just got to stay back on his back leg a little bit longer and drive towards that catcher's glove. He's having a tough time locating a way to left handers because he's pulling off everything. A dangerous pitch to a dangerous hitter. Morrison homered into the seats in right field his first time up. And at the knees. Even that pitch right there, you saw where Kurt Suzuki's setting up away, and that pitch came right over the middle part of the plate. It was down in the zone, but it's because he's rushing with his lower body, he's opening up his shoulder a little too quick and not driving towards the catcher's glove. Seven prior starts and five ground ball double plays. Longoria doesn't run well. He's got a very short lead at first. To left and retreating is Grossman at the wall, leaping, and it is gone a home run. Another home run for Morrison, his fourth of the series, and the lead is trimmed to one. Well, Morrison showing power to all fields, right, center, and now left. I don't know how many times we're going to watch balls left up and over the plate, but it's pretty obvious if you're paying attention why balls are hit that hard. Tyler Duffy has not really shown any off speed pitches. Even his breaking ball has been fairly hard today. And that's something he needs to start incorporating in his repertoire. Seven runs yesterday, all on home runs. Three today so far, all on home runs. One strike. Just off the plate with the fastball. Nine outs on the board. This will be the 60th pitch for Duffy. A liner to right, and that'll 
that'll be a base hit in front of Kepler. Pierce's second hit, and the tying runs aboard with nobody out. I'm going to take another look at the point of contact on Morrison's last home run. The extension that he gets, how he can reach out there. He hasn't really shown him any pitches on the inner part of the plate. And he's a big strong guy. He's on a pretty good streak of his own right now. Dickerson smashed a line drive caught by Escobar his first time up. And other than Miller's two ground ball outs, everything that's been hit has been hit either in a real good spot or hit really well. Good news is Tyler Duffy still has a lead, and he has to understand that. You've got to eliminate that. It's tough sometimes to eliminate those pitches that he's thrown, but body control can still get him right back in this game. He's got to locate a little bit better. Get an out right here. Damage control, maybe a ground ball double play. We talked about it last time. And now 2 and 0. Oh, falling behind hitters will not help, however. Matt Andrees yesterday was on the ropes, didn't pitch particularly well, but he got a big ground ball double play off the bat of Nunez when he admitted afterwards he was really struggling and looking for something. And 3 and 0. Now somebody needs to maybe. And this would be a good time for Eric Rasmus to go out there just and say that he's yeah. just, he's jumping at the ball or at the catcher's glove. He's, he's rushing, his lower body's going faster than his upper body, and he. Keeps pulling towards first base, and that's you know common for a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. Four pitch walk. The inning started with a walk to Longoria, home run, single. Now a walk, still nobody out. Souza will hit, and here comes Eric Rasmus. Time now for greater coverage of baseball, brought to you by T-Mobile. News and notes from Major League Baseball last night. James Shields traded from the Padres to the White Sox. Clayton Kershaw. Didn't have his best stuff last night. It was my joy last night to watch part of that broadcast uh, with Vin Scully uh, doing the telecast. But Shields now back in the American League Central, and uh, you know some terms had to be negotiated there. The bottom line is the San Diego Padres are going to pay the Chicago White Sox thirty million dollars to have James Shields pitch, pitch for them. <laughs> God bless what, America. What a crazy world we live in. Shields got the huge contract from the Padres, and so now to get the trade executed, they've got to give Taylor Rogers warming up. They've got to give the White Sox thirty million dollars. And then today, the Dodgers designated Carl Crawford, Crawford for assignment, and they're still on the hook for thirty-five million to him, and don't want him to play for them anymore. Big at bat now here for Souza and Duffy. Tying run at second, and the pitch flared foul, one strike. Souza struck out his first time up. And if you can get Souza, then you've got Conger and Beckham, major league hitters, but not having much uh, success this year. Souza showed his power in yesterday's game. In a similar spot, hitting a three run home run that turned the game around. I think part of the learning curve for a young pitcher is understanding when big outs are necessary, how to get them. And this is a big plate appearance for Souza, but even a bigger opportunity for Duffy to stay in this game. He's about one or two hitters away from maybe losing a, a chance to win a game that he could win. He's still winning this game right now. Souza with two strikes yesterday said he choked up on the bat, toned down his swing, and still hit it into the second deck. Got a breaking ball from Santana. Here's a fastball off the plate, one and two. Sometimes I think a catcher, even though Duffy's probably not feeling at all an off speed pitcher, Kurt Suzuki should tell him you have to throw it because it'll keep him back a little longer. How There's many a, can they get? There's One. Two. two, a huge double play. And for Souza, his 187th at bat and just his second ground ball double play. 
Well, that's great damage control right there. You needed to roll a double play. Now, wait a second. Sousa's still at first base. Yeah. I don't think he's going to win. Let's see. We're going to see it right here, I think. Now, Sousa's coming back in. I'm not sure why. Because he's out. Yeah. <laughs> Two down, the tying run now at third. And as Andres remarked yesterday, that double play uh, by uh, Nunez, that Nunez hit in a key spot, uh, kind of allowed him to catch a second wind out there. We'll see if that has the same effect now on Duffy. Still got one more out to get, Good and that should be it. A couple of big pitches for Duffy, keeping the Twins in the lead. It's 4 3 after three and a half. game on Fox Sports North is presented by Super America. Get your not whole kids day vouchers at any local Super America. Jack Morris I can imagine you being a part of the not whole gang at Met Stadium a time or two. Well not not because of uh, it was just coincidental. I would be at some games once in a while and it would be not whole day. Right. Brian Dozier will lead off the fourth for the twins 0 for 2. Struck out with Nunez at second in the first inning and then popped up with the bases loaded and one out in the second. Strike called one and one. Smiley now with 72 pitches, so Kevin Cash is making sure somebody's ready in the bullpen. This game is uh, brought within one run again. I don't think uh, the reins are going to be too, or the leash is going to be too long now for Drew Smiley. Dana Evelyn, the left hander, warming up. Two and one to Dozier. Popped up. It'll reach the seats two and two. Hey, how about the trip to the mound by Eric Rasmussen? He's done that a couple times this year. <laughs> Very good. Whatever he's saying is working. I can't imagine you were one who particularly welcomed. <laughs> A trip to the mound by a pitching coach. Everybody in this ballpark knows why the pitching coach goes to the mound. Because you stink. Do you ever see a pitching coach go to the mound to shake his hand, say, You're doing a hell of a job, kid, keep it going? <laughs> no. So you already know what the conversation's going to be. Uh, what to get for a wedding gift, right? I mean, according to the movie, right? Yeah. Candlesticks. Yeah. Sure. That's exactly what they say. Two and two to Dozier. Twins trying to add on some runs here. This does not look like it's going to be one of those games that's going to end four to three. Chopper foul. Dozier, Maurer, and Park. And 
inside. Full count. Smiley really has struggled. Yes, he has. In all three innings, he was uh, fortunate to get through the first two innings with just one run allowed. Then the Twins hung a three up in the third. Almost as many balls as strikes. And popped up. And out of play. Ryan Dozier just helped them with what have been ball four. Dozier looked to be headed toward uh, being one of those players to walk 100 times a year, but now the walks have been fewer and far between. Farther between. 20 walks on a year, one of those intentional in roughly a third of the season. And time call. Fly left center field. Mata drifting back out of the track and making the catch right in front of the fence. One away. If you are a baseball fan and you need the all new Fox Sports app, get highlights, interviews, injury updates, scores, and instant alerts on your favorite teams and rivals. Download now in the iOS App Store, Google Play, or visit foxsportsnorth.com slash app. Here is Joe Maurer, an RBI single in the first, and then he struck out with the bases loaded and two out in the second. Earlier we were using uh, descriptions or using one word to describe how the Twins have fared with bases loaded situations, and I think the word we used was dreadful. That might be kind. Twins so far this year with the two at bats this uh, afternoon are five for 42 with. The base is loaded. And with two outs, they've yet to get a, a two out hit with the bases loaded. One and one. Fouled away. One and two. When Joe has struck out, and he has cut the strikeouts down this year, but when he has struck out, it seems like more often than not, it's a high fastball, which in years past we never used to see him swing at. That's how Smiley got him in the second yeah, inning. He did. He threw a high fastball that he chased out of the zone up. On the ground, weakly to Beckham. Two down, and that'll bring up Park. Park with a strikeout in the first, and then it looked like he hit almost the exact same pitch for a home run leading off the third inning. Take another look at that home run swing from Young Ho Park. This is the strikeout in the first inning. Bell tie over the middle. Yep. Well, that was a breaking ball. Breaking ball. So yep. two different pitches, but about the same location, different speeds, obviously. Back to the fastball at the knees, strike one. For Park, his tenth home run, and his first home run in more than three weeks. And what's crazy is all the home runs he's hit. Hardly anybody been on base. Yeah. They're all solos. Yeah. That's why the. 19 runs batted in with the 10 home runs. Had a three hit game here the other night. And now the home run today. Swing and a miss. One and two. Smiley could use a quick inning after the. Arduous first three innings he had. And he's one good pitch away from having that quick one, two, three inning. Foul back. Pitch count keeps climbing for Drew Smiley. Evelyn still throwing out there in the bullpen. Off the handle of the bat. And Conger comes over and oh did he make the catch he, he falls did. into the dugout and he made the catch Hank Conger with a tremendous play and let's hope he's all right what a catch by Hank Conger right at the steps of the Tampa Bay dugout the inning ends in a remarkable catch by Hank Conger well he 
total focus, but nobody there to help him. Top of the fifth in a 4-3 Twins leading game. And we're in the middle of the Minnesota State Lottery at Winter Circle, which means 100 scratch-off tickets and a great cause here. 45 years together yesterday from South Dakota, Tom and Stephanie. What a great way to celebrate that anniversary. Now, this is your most recent baseball game together. I want to know what the first baseball game was that you guys watched together. Well, I think it was probably when I was playing amateur baseball, we went together and and uh, I had a, we had a good time. And, of course, I was 0 for 4. <laughs> But she still kept you even after that 0 for 4. Yes, she kept me after 0 for 4, yes. Congratulations on those 45 years. 100 scratch-off tickets from the Minnesota State Lottery and getting circled today by a World Series hero, Mr. Jack Morris. Hey, Thank Kevin, you Kevin, can you ask him where in South Dakota are they from? Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, okay, very nice. I always like to mention the hometowns of our uh, loyal Twins fans. Here's a strike at the knees, 1 and 2 to Tim Beckham. Beckham struck out swinging his first time up and Duffy as much as Smiley needed a one two three bottom of the fourth Duffy needs one of those here in the fifth. And he got a strike out of Beckham to start the inning. Got him to swing chase that slider right there. And a good start to a, hopefully a good quick inning. Well, that double play off the bat of Sousa may have been a huge turning point in this game. Now Matuk who struck out in the first and then bounced a single up the middle in the third. Strikeout number six for Tyler Duffy. Hey I've talked about this a number of times and certainly is true today for some reason all the years I've been broadcasting there's something special about being at a ballpark on a Sunday afternoon and I think for me it's my upbringing with town team baseball. Where the town team in Dumont played literally in my backyard on Sunday afternoons, and I just associated Sunday afternoons with baseball. And now, good fortune for me, I'm able to do that professionally. But does there make any difference day of the week? Did you enjoy weekend or day games or anything more than others? Well, as a player, I dreaded day games. Really? My record was just as good in day games as night games, but for whatever reason, I felt my body clock didn't start until about four in the afternoon. Really? Okay. But. Uh, all I can say is today's weather if you can't get excited about it <laughs> knowing especially that we're going to have that miserable 90 degree stuff something and I'm not a hot weather guy. I know a lot of people enjoy it but it doesn't get much better than what we have right oh, here today. Perfect. And no bugs or at least very few of them. Two and two. And off the plate. It's interesting you say that your body clock didn't get going until four o'clock or whatever. But Bert has always said boy he loved. Uh, pitching those morning games at the Met Stadium or at the Metrodome, yeah. you know, the early uh, the afternoon games, figuring that the hitters weren't well, quite awake yet. Psychological warfare, yeah, you know, and yeah. that's true. 
I did enjoy pitching real cold games when I was young. Because I'm from Minnesota, I figure I can handle it better than anybody else. And it's I love to edge. jam guys with fastballs. Nothing better than throwing in a 30 degree day and breaking a guy's bat on the inner half of the plate. That was Stry really. <laughs> Strike out of Montuk. Two down. Yeah. Duffy hoping to. Number seven for yeah. Tyler Duffy. Hey, coming up June 8th at Superhero Night at Target Field, a limited number of Superhero theme night ticket packages are available that include a game ticket and twins superhero t-shirt for every ticket purchase the twins will donate a twins superhero cape to a child at Gillette Children's Hospital and a portion of the ticket will go to a Gillette specialty health care go to twinsbaseball.com slash superhero night to learn more about the superhero theme night offer now I don't want to uh, tip uh, off our hand here but I, I saw Kevin Gord uh, in the clubhouse today asking some twins players about their favorite superheroes and the thought occurred to me uh, we might get some interesting answers with players from all over the globe now we've got a player from South Korea we have a player from Germany the Latin American countries well I'm I'm sure there are different programs in those other countries yeah. but there's a lot of American TV too. So. Batman's universal, right? I would think. Superman. One and two to Brad Miller. Wow, what an inning for Duffy. Not only a one-two-three inning, but as we used to say, a snapper mow him down inning. He struck out the side. Robbie Grossman will lead off the bottom of the fifth against Drew Smiley. And the first pitch over the outside corner of strike. Pepsi fans of the game enjoying a perfect afternoon here at Target Field and a Twins lead so far, 4 3, thanks in part to Grossman. It is third home run of the year right after Byung Ho Park had hit uh, Park's 10th home run of the year in the third inning. And when Paul Molitor said one thing that has been a pleasant surprise for Grossman, better at bats than expected from the left side of the plate, I think he could throw in some power as well. A lot of extra base pop, three home runs on the season. Fouled back. But in his entire major league career, 666 at bats with the Astros prior to coming to the Twins, he only had 11 home runs, and he's jumped out of the chute with three quick ones for the twin. I think that's all about the good approach and uh, seeing the ball out in front, making contact out in front the way you're supposed to. 
Swing and a miss here, and Grossman strikes out to start the fifth. Strikeout number seven for Drew Smiley. So both pitchers are getting their strikeouts up there. That'll bring up Escobar, who has had a good history against Smiley, but not today. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Smiley's got him both times on off speed pitches that are down, and Escobar just not being able to lay off those pitches down in the zone. Down and in, ball one. Foul back. Twins, the only team in the American League Central playing outside the division. They've had a long rain delay in Cleveland with Corey Kluber and the Indians leading the Royals 5 0. That game stopped temporarily, they hope, in the sixth inning. And Detroit leading the White Sox 5 2 in the seventh. Tap foul, and Escobar having a hard time making any contact, another much off. less solid contact. Another, another change up right there. I think one of the hardest jobs in baseball, two of the hardest jobs in baseball, being a bench player and not getting consistent at bats and being expected to go up there when a pitcher has got a variety of pitches and being that long man in relief. And what makes them both difficult is you just don't have any routine. And baseball players are victims of routine. You've got to get your at bats, you've got to get your pitches thrown off the mound uh, on, the, on the playing surface. Two and two to Escobar. Well, essentially, that's what you were saying a moment ago about your body clock not starting until four o'clock. You were starting every fourth or fifth day, but your routine was to start ramping up starting at four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would start before that, but you know, it's. I felt like that's when I started waking. My <laughs> body just felt sluggish. Escobar works. Works a, a walk here. Kepler coming up at first. Team USA continues their campaign in the 100th anniversary of the Copa America on Tuesday as they take on CONCACAF rival Costa Rica. It all starts at 6 p.m. only on FS1, or you can watch the entire tournament live on Fox Sports Go. Here's Kepler, drew a four pitch walk leading off the second, got as far as third base, then he hit a fly ball to left in the third. Center and Matuk with the catch. Escobar will bluff about a quarter of the way and retreat two down. Now Kepler has swung at two first pitches to make fly outs in his last two plate appearances. Paul Mahler has always been a proponent of trying to see as many pitches as you can as a young player, but. On the other hand, it's kind of a catch-22 because they always encourage you to hit a pitch that you yeah. see and, and feel you can do something with. So that's one of the things Paul said about Kepler and the times that he's been with the big league club. They want him both at the plate and in the field. Be a little more aggressive. Yeah. Don't be tentative. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Two down now, and Suzuki will bat singled and scored in the third. His run, the fourth run, the difference in the ball game right now. Have been doing some running against Hank Conger, and I don't know that Escobar is the best candidate to do that, but the throw to first. The Rays want to make sure. Suzuki with a good at bat and a solid single to center, and then he scored on Buxton's triple off the right field fence. Dirt Conger comes up ready to fire. Day off tomorrow for the Twins and three with the Marlins, three with the Red Sox, and then a three-game series in Anaheim, then back home for a week. And the Twins so badly want to play well at home for so many reasons. That's what makes this game so important. Hard to have a good home stand or a good home stretch when you lose that first series. 
Kevin Cash has probably got as much out of Drew Smiley as he could expect. You can see the pitch count there at 101. Popped up right side. Going to get him through five innings anyway. Beckham in the outfield grass, tracks it, makes the catch, and ends the fifth inning. Out of the sixth in a one run game. The sixth, and you'd like to think he's already had enough of an impact in this series. Oh, he's hit three home runs in three games. The only one not is uh, today's game. Well, let's hope we keep it that way. And yesterday, another home run on a pitch blasted, and another no doubter down the left field line. It'll be Longoria, Morrison, and Pierce facing Duffy in the sixth inning. So who is the only batter to hit a home run versus the Twins in each game of a four game series I said Griffey slash Mattingly. Edwin Encarnacion. Well let's see Griffey Mattingly are both were both left handed batters Encarnacion right. I'm trying to figure out some tangent here's a drive to right center field. And that ball is going to hit the top of the wall. No, they're saying home run. And uh, as if on cue, Longoria, just the second opponent to hit a home run in each of a four game series against the Twins, and the game is tied. Well, the next hitter, Logan Morrison, does not qualify because he hit four home runs, but it's only been over the course of three games. Watch this ball right here. Ball was a backup slider. Lagari has just got so much strength. He's just muscled that ball up there, just clearing a line that qualifies for the home run there in right center. Now Morrison lines one to right field, and Kepler comes in to make the catch. Morrison's already homered twice in the ball game, and I'll say it again: all seven runs yesterday coming on home runs, and all four today so far on home runs. One down. Here's Pierce. Pierce with a pair of singles. Down and away. Ball one. The final run that the Rays got on Friday night came on a home run. So the last 12 runs they've scored in this series. Have all come on home runs. Swing and a miss. Steve Pierce is having a pretty good series. You mentioned that he hasn't played in every game. He got a pinch hit in game one of this series. And two for two here today. Ball looped to right, and that'll die in front of Kepler for a base hit. 
bring up Dickerson. We talked too a little bit about the balance that the Rays have in their lineup in terms of power. But it has been Morrison and Longoria doing most of the damage. They each have four home runs in this series. Now Dickerson has nine on the season. Trip to the mound by Suzuki. Ryan Presley warming up down in the Twins pen now. Dickerson with a line out and a walk. Pitch count at 91, so it could be the last inning for Tyler Duffy. And as it stands, he might be, unless he completes this inning and the Twins could score in the bottom half of the inning, he's fighting for a no decision right now. You talked before about, and I heard you talk about it with Paul Molitor too, finding a way. As a starting pitcher, when you don't have your best stuff. Now, Duffy's got a lot of strikeouts today, but the Rays as a team strike out a lot. They also hit a lot of home runs, and they've done that three times. It would appear to be one of those games where Duffy doesn't have his great stuff. We haven't seen the great breaking ball today that we've normally seen. And he's trying to find a way to at least get through six innings. My analysis of this game for Tyler is he came out strong. He had a good fastball early. He used it. Got two strikeouts in the first inning, a one, two, three inning. And he's kind of jumped at a lot of pitches since then. Nunez with room. And a catch for out number two. He had a very good fifth inning with three strikeouts. But the one thing I haven't seen him use today is anything off speed. He's used hardly any off speed breaking balls. Now, when you don't have a changeup working, You've got to go to one of the pitches that shows a difference in depth. And Tyler has had a good a variety of, of uh, miles per hour on his breaking ball. Looks like that's going to be it. Paul Molitor out to the mound. And I'm sure Duffy not happy again with his his outing because he has no chance to win this game. And that runner at first base is his, so he could eventually lose it. But a change on the mound for the Twins with two out in the sixth. Tosses and again, Jack Morris and I are not invited, but you are. Wine, Women, and Baseball is back in 2016. That's if you're a, a woman. June 9th is the first date with a limited number of special ticket packages that include a Twins stemless wine glass and a pregame hospitality event at Lowe's Minneapolis Hotel. You can learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash WWB, as in Wine, Women, Baseball, or call 833 Twins. We kind of just explained why I wasn't invited. <laughs> Steven Souza Jr. will bat against Ryan Presley trying to get the Twins off the field here in the sixth. 
That landed in front of the left handed batter's box. And it'll be a wild pitch advancing Pierce to second base. And now the go ahead run is in scoring position. Paul Mahler going to Ryan Presley can not really any surprise he's been very good lately and they need an out right here to keep the game tied. One and oh. And now two and oh. We got a base open now. We've seen Souza's power over oh two today may have Grounded into a huge double play depending on the outcome of this game in the fourth inning. And Conger on deck. Three and zero. Oh. Presley's numbers for the most part are okay. An opponent batting average of 254. 30 and two thirds innings, four home runs, but 14 walks, which is high for Ryan. He's in danger of walking his 15th batter. Green lighted and a high fly to deep right. Kepler back and making the catch against the wall. A great play by Kepler and how that ball missed hitting the overhang, I have no idea. Longoria's home run tied it. And Souza nearly untied it. It's 4 4 going to the bottom of the sixth. Tough plays on the road in Oakland the other day. And watch, it's hard to see with the shadows, but watch how close that ball came to hitting the overhang. And Kepler played it exactly how you're supposed to play it, knowing that your center fielder in there, the event there is a carom, has got you backed up. That was a high fly ball that didn't miss hitting the limestone by much. Well, it gets back to the wall so well. And you, you kind of reference the importance of that center fielder coming across. Buxton's got great speed, so he can trust that he's going to back him up. New pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays, Erasmo Ramirez. Lots of games pitched. This is his 24th. He's done a good job. He won the game the other night, lost a game the other night. Strike of the knees to Buxton, who has two hits, a bunt single pushed along the first baseline in the second. Then a triple high off the wall down the right field line into the corner. One strike. All back now two strikes. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Buxton was recalled, hitting 156. Now his season average is 242. He's done exactly what the Twins had hoped he'd do. He went down and he improved, and he keeps improving. This one hit into center field and that ball will drop for a base hit. He's got a three hit game. 
putting the ball in play with two strikes and the more the twins see of that the bigger their smiles will be. Yeah because tomorrow that looks like a line drive. It's a base hit any way you look at it. And now you got the best speed in the game on first base a leadoff hit. Tie game right now. See that Beckham kind of turned the wrong way but he was going to get to it anyway. So Byron Buxton gets his third hit of the game. And that'll bring up Eduardo Nunez. Well, we've seen in situations like this, the Twins have stolen early and often. And now there's a right-hander on the mound who does not have the pickoff move that Drew Smiley has. There's a, the first of what might be several throws. Yeah, I was going to say, he may have more throws to first base than he did to that hole at bat for Buxton. There's two. Why do we both think <laughs> this could be a seven throw over at bat. Again, Congress had terrible time throwing out runners just two out of twenty one. Not on the first pitch and it's a strike called on the outside corner. <laughs> Depending on how long the at bat goes, Nunez is wearing the number nine. There may be nine throwovers. Let's hope not. There's a bunt. And Nunez retired and Buxton advances. So not on a stolen base. They'll give uh, Nunez credit for a sacrifice bunt. Bring Dozier to the play. That was a decent bunt. He did his job. He got Buxton in the scoring position. A good job by Erasmo Ramirez of fielding that ball. You see, and we know how well Eduardo Nunez runs and gets down the line. And that wasn't an easy bang bang play, but he did a good job off the mound. And here's Dozier, 0 for 3. Down the left field line, but foul. It's more notable, I suppose, when an infield doesn't shift with Dozier at the plate. But Beckham is on the third base side of second base. And the first baseman, Morrison, about 25, 30 feet off the baseline. I'm guessing that they're going to set up a way. You watch Hank Conger as he shifts to the outer part of the plate. And strike, strike two. And a strike on the outer half of the plate. Jack swing strike three Dozier's gone two down. And that'll bring up Mauer. See this ball kind of tail in. And I think Brian Dozier was more reacting than anything else. But Hank Conger the catcher does a great job of yelling right away check check. And uh, home plate umpire Will Little looked at Ted Barrett at first base. Called the strike. Joe Maurer now going to get intentionally walked. With a base open, Maurer will be walked, setting up Hart. I'll be curious after the game, and it's just a guess on my part, but I'm guessing Nunez bunted on his own. And I don't think Paul Molitor would have asked a guy hitting 330 with speed no. at first base to put down a bunt. Now, whether Nunez was bunting for a base hit or not, he got credit for a sacrifice, but. I'd be stunned if that came from the bench. And the reason I'm going to agree with you is I have a feeling Paul Mahler would have had a straight steal eventually. Yes. With yeah. uh, Buxton at first base to get him into scoring. That's why I didn't quite understand. Now Buxton, it's up to him. And there was a situation similar part of the ball game last night where the Twins wanted Buxton to go, 
and but he never went and right. then Nunez hit into the double play and that might have been playing in Nunez's mind too. I don't want to repeat of what happened yesterday. So it's Park's turn with runners at first and second and two away Park with a strikeout a home run to left and a foul out to the Rays dugout. Conger made a great play sliding into the dugout. Fouled back on a pitch up. Ramirez now with 41 innings pitch. We saw 35 hits make it 36 now. Six home runs allowed. 0 and 1 to Park. Inside a check swing, 1 and 1. Saying this a little bit sarcastically, but he has seven wins. That's one less than the entire starting staff for the <laughs> Twins. And he's a middle reliever. One start. And that's it. And all those wins and losses. Chopper, foul. Eleven decisions with just one start. And he's been very active, shall yeah, we say. Yeah, 63 total pitches. In the last seven days, so his manager Kevin Cash and pitching coach Jim Hickey have determined that uh, he's been durable, and as long as we can ride him out there and keep things running, he's, he's been able to handle the calls. One and two to Young Ho Park. Struck him out, and the Twins strand two more. They've left nine men on. We are tied after six. Some more long balls. Yeah, Logan Morrison gets his first home run. That was back in the second inning. Young Ho Park got his first home run in about, what'd you say, three weeks? A little over three weeks. And that was good to see. Robbie Grossman follows Young Ho Park with a home run of his own. And Morrison gets his second home run. And the guy we talked about not letting beat you. Kevin Longoria goes to right center for his fourth home run in four days. So it's been bombs away here at Target Field. A strike call on a check swing. It'll be Conger Beckham and Matuk facing Ryan Presley, who might have been benefited uh, with having some more warm up pitches here. He fell behind Souza 3 0. And then Souza was. Given the green light, he nearly hit one over the wall in right field, and now Presley misses again in the dirt. It's one and one. Ryan, Ryan Presley really uh, 
manicuring the mound there. He's been digging with his foot and the spikes trying to get a good foothold. And sometimes as a reliever you're coming in and whoever the pitchers are starting pitchers can really mess things up for you. And if you, I, I feel like right now he just hasn't got uh, that feel that he needs from his feet to land in the same spot every time. He's thrown seven pitches. I don't think he's thrown one where he wants to. Three and one now. Conger, not someone you want to walk. No. He's, he's a 200 hitter. And he missed badly. A five pitch walk, and Conger draws a leadoff walk. And now Beckham in what will very likely be a bunning situation, but first. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Here's Beckham, who struck out twice today, his average down to 183. And the Twins saw Nunez bunt on the bottom of the sixth. Taylor Motter is in there to pinch run for Hank Conger, so that'll bring in Kirk Casale to catch here. Breaking ball, and there's a bunt. That's a good one. Suzuki's going to have to hurry, and they just good barely ball. got him. Good play right there. Perfectly placed bunt by Beckham. A sacrifice getting Motter to second base. Kurt Suzuki did not panic there. That ball was placed perfect. It was right in between Nunez and Presley, and of course, close enough that Kurt Suzuki's calling for it the whole time, but it keeps rolling away from him. But he did not panic and made a good, strong, accurate throw over there to Byung Ho Park to get the out. So one down, the go ahead run at second, and now Mata. One for three, a couple of strikeouts, and a ground ball base hit up the middle. There's a fastball down the middle, and maybe that pitch will help yeah, that, get Presley back in the strike zone. It actually looked like the first pitch that he actually felt good about. Swing and a miss. Got away with one right there. Always left middle half in. Matuk, even with his one hit, he's hitting 132. Handful of, of at bats. 38 at bats. If he can throw his breaking ball for a strike here, he's got it. Fast ball zipped inside. 96 miles per hour. The problem is we've seen so many of those curves yeah. in the dirt landing well in front of the plate. And Suzuki is aware of it too. I mean, you, you tend not to want to call a pitch that he hasn't located yet. Time call just as Presley was breaking from the stretch. Pitchers hate that. Just absolutely hate that. That you're about ready to throw and you, you feel like you feel like letting it go and hitting somebody. <laughs> That's what you feel like. One and two. Got him with a fastball. Right there. 96 miles per hour and Mata looking for the curveball, but it never came. Two down. And now Brad Miller. First strikeout for Ryan Presley. You can see he just hits Kurt Suzuki's glove. Great location. Fastball. Not too many guys gonna be able to hit that one. Box tracks by carrier. And now Miller over three. A couple of ground balls and a strikeout. Base is open, but Longoria is on deck, so Presley will try to go after and get Miller. Breaking ball fouled over the dugout. And Obad warming up. That 
crisp 97 mile per hour fastball for a strike. 0 oh and 2 now. Presley's showing that his arm is alive. That's a. You guys possess that kind of heater right there. That's by him before he can really even react. No sense even messing with it. Throw it again. 97 off the plate. Well, if you could just throw a curveball and get it past home plate, you'd get this guy, wouldn't you? And 88. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, if you locate a curveball, you probably get him, but why even give him a chance? By throwing a curveball, you might speed up his bat. And there's no way he's going to touch 97, yeah. 98 if you can just locate it on the outer third. Two and two. There's a breaking ball, a weak little pop up. Nunez in foul ground, fighting the sun, makes the catch. And the inning ends. Presley with an effective seventh inning after the leadoff walk. He got the next three guys. And on this wonderful Sunday afternoon, as is our custom, it's our pleasure to bring you God Bless America. Rise and welcome Hastings High School Show Choir Director and 2016 Twins Audition winner Megan Quinn as she leads us in the singing of God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside. Through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet. Side up here at Target Field as we hit the bottom of the seventh inning. This top copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not, may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Twins have had uh, one big inning. They scored three runs in the third. They've had other opportunities but haven't been able to. Put up a, a big number. We'll see what Grossman can do to start the bottom of the seventh against Ramirez. Down and in, ball one. Grossman with a home run as a right handed batter in the third. Twins have hit two today. Grossman and Park hitting back to back solo home runs. Foul back, one and one. 
Martin earlier we showed you Grossman splits he has advertised a much better right handed hitter than left and most of his at bats coming from the left side. Well off the plate, two and one. It'll be Escobar. Excuse me, Grossman, then Escobar, then Kepler. Kirk Casali doing the catching now for the Rays. Twins got right-handed Brandon Kinsler warming up. That's usually a sign that he'll be coming in. Rarely does Paul let Presley throw more than one inning. And I would think that you would want a fresh as arm as possible to face Longoria to start the eighth <laughs> inning. Three and one to Grossman and ball four. Grossman draws another walk. But Grossman, uh, in addition to hitting well, he's picking up a bunch of walks. He's picked up walks 11 and 12, and he's now walked more times than he struck out. Let's check in with Kevin Gord. Hey guys, Eduardo Escobar up to bat right now. Says he was excited to get back in the lineup, so he's working to get back the uh, the good flow he had offensively earlier in the year. And he says he wants to make contributions on and off the field every single game. He loves to be in the dugout, making noise, creating energy. And I asked Paul Mauder about that. And Mauder said, "Absolutely, as the way this season has gone, to have a kid like Escobar in there every day with the same positive attitude, pumping people up, makes a big difference." He said, "Baseball is a grind. Guys like Escobar make it fun to come to the park, and he loves having this kid in the lineup today." And Escobar's had a tough day at the plate, although he walked his last time up two swinging strikeouts as a right-handed batter, his preferred side, and now he'll try to bunt from the left side of the plate. Well, it's a bunting situation. You want to get Grossman over to second base in scoring position. And Conger no longer behind the dish. Casali throws better than he does, so you're gonna have to move that runner via the bunt. Taken low. In yesterday's game, Longoria threw a ball that was a little off target at first base. And I had to watch it on replay because I didn't believe I saw it the first time. I've always considered him to be the best throwing third baseman, most accurate thrower uh, currently in the game, maybe the best I've ever seen. He very rarely makes a poor decision or a bad throw. And so if you're going to bunt in that direction, you got a guy with decent speed at first. You do need to put down a good bunt. If it's too hard and if Longoria gets it, he may get the force out at second base. Well, that's just it. That, that brings up a good question. Longoria now is, uh, he, he saw something. He wants Gasali to come out and talk the three of them on the mound, but. Brings up a good point. Are you better off if you're Escobar to bump the ball towards Morrison at first base, knowing that the guy at third base can do a lot of great things defensively? And the first baseman's a left handed thrower, so it's a little bit easier for him to make a throw to second base, too. Longoria starting back on the dirt. One and one to Escobar. There's a good bunt. And Longoria work. has no choice but to throw to first. Perfectly put down by Escobar, and Grossman goes to second. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people, by working to provide all youth and uh, high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. Go ahead, run at second. One down, and now Max Kepler. A couple nights ago, Kepler came up late in the ball game. The bases loaded and struck out on three pitches. Oh, well, he swung at the last two pitches. They're going to intentionally walk Max wow. Kepler. Wow. Got a base open. Suzuki on deck. This surprises yeah, me a little bit. Yeah, you usually don't walk the go ahead run. After, well after the sixth inning, even the seventh inning here, but uh, they're going to do something a little unorthodox in baseball terms anyway. By Kepler's putting. hitting 200, and they're intentionally walking him. And Suzuki, a veteran hitter, is one for three. 
Well, Kepler got uh, the hit that he got back in game one was off of uh, Cedeno, not Ramirez. So I don't quite understand that one. Well, either way, let's hope it works out for the Twins. Well, the double play is certainly a possibility here, but now Suzuki, much more veteran hitter than Kepler, will have a chance. And behind him is Buxton, who already has three hits this afternoon. Off the plate, ball one. Field corner, but it'll slice foul. Suzuki put the barrel of the bat on it, but fouled it away. Well, Kurt will do something that everybody likes. He'll go with the pitch. If the ball's to the outer half of the plate. He's not afraid to shoot it that way. It's a pretty nice hole there between the second baseman. And the first baseman, Beckham the second baseman, and Morrison the first baseman, a lot of room out there. Which is a called strike one and two. And for Gene Glenn, all sorts of things running through your mind now. Where is the hit if it comes? How fast is Grossman? And is this Byron Buxton's day? Buxton had been very strikeout prone in his first stint. Things you consider in terms of whether to send a runner in the event Suzuki gets ahead. Swing and a miss, and Suzuki strikes out, and it'll be left to Buxton. Second time that Suzuki has struck out today. And we'll find out if it is Byron Buxton's day, and the rest of us are just living in it. One single in the second inning. He cracked a triple off the wall in right. Then on an 0 2 pitch, he got his third hit. Dumping a little single in the right center field. Going after the first pitch and pounding it foul into the Rays dugout. One thing that I've noticed here in the last, in this series anyway, with Buxton is that he is really doing a lot better job of tracking the ball to point of contact. Early his first go around, he was swinging and his head was flying off, off the ball late. A number. And Ramirez hesitates oh and he got Buxton by a step. Had a hard time getting a handle on the ball. Twins leave two more on in the seventh, and we are still tied at four.
All of America studio on this date back in 2001. The Minnesota Twins made Joe Maurer the first overall pick in the June draft. Maurer, the National High School Player of the Year in two sports, had committed to Florida State to play football but chose baseball. Made his debut in 2004 and the rest, as they say, is history. Now let's go back to the ballpark. Dick and wow. Jack. Joe's changed quite a bit, of course, over the years. But people are pretty confident back then he's going to become a great hitter. I think he made the right choice. Yeah. Too. Evan Longoria will lead off the eighth inning against Brandon Kinsler, who's been a nice uh, add to the Twins' bullpen over the course of the season. He's been pretty steady out of the pen. He'll be asked to at least give one inning, hopefully. And especially get this guy out or pitch around him. You don't want to put him on base, but it's one of those be careful with him, but get him out. Fastball up high, ball one. Longoria struck out swinging on a Tyler Duffy fastball in the first inning. Walked leading off the fourth and scored on Morrison's home run. Then tied the game with a home run. And here's that blast to left center field. Evan Longoria has done it again. His fifth home run of the series and the Rays take a 5 4 lead. And now the last 13 runs the Rays have scored in this series have all come on long balls. I'm not sure any of the Twins pitchers saw our pregame where we suggested that you don't let this guy beat you. But we're going to. Probably get another look at that uh, pitch thrown by Kinsler. One of the reasons Kinsler was the reliever of choice here. He's a sinker baller, keeps the ball down. And now Kinsler's given up three home runs in 12 and two thirds innings. So Morrison's Morrison, already homered yeah. twice today. Morrison and Longoria both have homered twice in this game. Busted bat. Nunez spins. Fires low. What a pick at first by Park. A tremendous play by Byung Ho Park for the first out. But the leadoff man, Longoria, did the Twins in again. Man, you can't throw those pitches. That's all I can say. Belt high and it tailed right over the middle of the plate. Now Steve Pierce will bat. Strike one. Pierce with three singles in the game. And a strike on the outside corner, 0 and 2. That last pitch right there is where Kinsler wanted to throw that pitch that Longoria hit out. He wanted to throw it down and away. He just left it like you said, Dick. It ran back over the plate up. And you just don't make a mistake. We talked about it so many times. I'm no different than anybody else. It seems like every time you make a mistake to a good hitter, you pay for it. Now we know that Ryan Presley throws harder than Brandon Kinsler does, but uh, more to the point, the location. We saw Presley when he was throwing his fastball for strikes, they were right at the knees. And you leave it up around the belt, and a lot of really unpleasant things can happen. Foul bat right at you, Jack. Kind of scared me there. I was looking at. I don't know what I was looking at. This guy to my left. I'm looking at him, and he says, "Right at me." I duck, and of course, it's nowhere close. But well, it hit right above us, and the fan right below us ended up getting the carom. I'm just trying to watch out for it. <laughs> we call them ugly finders, and I guess I'm still not in that class. <laughs> two two, and a ball grounded to first. Park will feed Kinsler two down. That'll bring up Dickerson. 
Target Field is a great place to spend time with the people who are important to you. Groups are eligible for discounts on tickets and per ticket fees are eliminated. So organize your group of 25 plus today. Learn more by visiting twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 twins and ask about a twins target field group outing. Two down and now Dickerson. Rays enjoying their first lead of the afternoon but that's kind of the way they've won the last two ball games by scoring late. Dickerson is 0 for 2 with a walk. Ball one. It's a even, but the Rays have hit four home runs in the ball game again today. The Twins, as a team, now have given up 82 home runs in this their 56th game. Quick Minnesota math suggests to me that's about one and a half home runs allowed per game. Just outside three and zero. Oh. Well, the reason for it, and we've seen it so evidently here in this series, is balls right over the heart of the plate to hitters that can handle the pitch over the middle of the plate. This is the big leagues. Foul back. Three and one. And Kevin Cash giving these hitters who have power the green light. We saw Souza getting the green light in the sixth inning on a 3 0 pitch. Now Dickerson hitting under 200, but with nine home runs is green lighted, fouling it back. And now three and two. Crowd gathered here today, and they're still cheering for the troops, hoping that Kinsler can get this out. The guys can come in and score a run. And Suzuki can't quite hang on to the foul tip. And home plate umpire Will Little will give Suzuki a little time. Might be that Suzuki got. A foul tip where Will Little got one earlier in the ball game. You're right, Joe Maurer made the right choice in not playing football, but he took his share of nasty foul tips behind the plate too. Well, so much so he can't play behind yeah, the plate anymore. Exactly. To left, and it'll. Of Grossman back a couple steps. He makes the catch. Here's the good news, Twins fans. If the Twins score a couple runs in the bottom of the eighth, they won't have to pitch to Evan Longoria again this series.
Tyler Evan Goria, one of the top power hitters in baseball, has never been very good at this ballpark until now. Five home runs this weekend. Second player ever to do it in all four games against the Twins. Yesterday, again, an unstoppable force for the race. Today, not once, but twice. Longoria single-handedly carrying the offense for the Tampa Bay Rays. An amazing five home runs within this series. The difference right now in a 5-4 lead for Tampa as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Stay with us directly after the game for Twins Live, presented by Central Inc. We'll break down all that power from the Rays. Take a look at a really solid day at the plate for Byron Buxton. He's seen his average jump way up since he got back from Rochester. Guys, we'll bring you inside the clubhouse. We'll hear from the manager, Paul Molitor, hopefully reflecting on a Twins rally and a Twins win. See if they can come back here in the late innings with Xavier Cedeno coming in to pitch to the Twins in the eighth inning, starting with Eduardo Nunez. And strike one. Nunez, Dozier, and Maurer facing Cedeno as the Rays try to protect this one run lead with Desmond Jennings in left field in for defense. Don't know about the status. Of Alex Colomay, their closer. Colomay got the save two nights ago, but he faced 10 batters and then he came in and had to face a batter in yesterday's game to get the save. Thrown 42 pitches over the last two games, got the save in each case. But whether that makes him unavailable for play here today remains to be seen. Nunez takes up and away a wild pitch, two and one. Is with a single, he reached down an air, he bounced to third and put down a bunt in the sixth, the sacrifice bunt. Fouled away, two and two. We've seen it in this series where manager Kevin Cash has gone to Ramirez and Cedeno. Pretty confident in those two guys. The numbers show that they've thrown a lot of innings. And their closer, Alex Colomay, I wouldn't be surprised at all that he'll be throwing in this game if the lead remains the same. Driven deep to left field. And gone a tie game. Nunez hitting his seventh. And we're tied at five. What a year Edwin nu Eduardo Nunez is having for the Twins. He just continues to day in and out, day out, get multi-hit games, and big hits. Nothing bigger than that one right there to tie this up. He's all fired up. His teammates have got to get fired up just watching him. What a huge home run after the Longoria home run in the top half of this inning. And now Dozier 0 for 4. You know, one huge compliment that I heard about it, Eduardo Nunez today, who came from his manager talking in the pregame manager show, that Nunez, even though he's having probably the best year of his career, is not happy to lose. He's, he's not content just because he's having a good year. Uh, he, he's upset about the losses. So that shows that he's, and he said it came from instilling the winning tradition in New York. One and one. Two and one. And Daniel working Dozier over inside. Now Dozier the one right handed batters had the most success against lefties. Coming into the game with a 333 average against lefties, but he was 0 for 4 against Smiley. Dick, I want to ask you a question here. Can we just eliminate the whole thought that hung over Target Field for several years when it was brand new that this was a pitcher friendly <laughs> ballpark? We have seen that is no longer, if you swing it and hit the ball square, it's going to get out of here. I, I've always told people I, I think, think this is a fair. very, very fair I ballpark. Do too. That's pulled down the line, but right at Longoria. And one away. Take another look at Eduardo Nunez's last swing, a slider that Cedeno wasn't all that bad a pitch, but when you're swinging as well as Eduardo Nunez right now, 
Just barely clears it. A couple rows deep in the left field. And you can see how excited Nunez is there to tie the game. It's Daniel, not so much. <laughs> and now Maurer. An RBI single in the first. A strikeout, a ground out, and an intentional walk. And now a strike, a breaking ball over the inside corner. Seen Joe. It was a pretty lazy curveball. Got a good word for it. If he throws it again to Joe, we've seen Joe turn on that pitch and hit it a long way. He tried right there and missed. It's 0 2. So he's taken one. He swung through another one. You come back with another one. Don't hang it. 0 oh 2. Going up. Cutter away. 1 and 2. Fastball down and in. Two and two. Park on deck. And off the plate now it's a full count. A lot of guys would have a tough time laying off that last pitch. They see it up in the zone, and yet it's just off the plate. Breaking ball got him. So he came back to the curve after Maurer had taken one for a strike, swung through one for strike two, and got him to swing and miss for strike three. And now Byung Ho Park. A home run to left and four trips. There have been two more strikeouts today. Strike one. Well, Morrison and Longoria both had two home runs. I don't see any reason, any good reason anyway, why Park couldn't go ahead and get a second one here today. Home run he hit against Smiley in the third, his first against a left handed pitcher this year. One and one. Kevin Jepson warming up in the Twins' pen. Get the ninth inning. Popped up right side. Had an infield shift on. So Beckham has to run over and make the catch right in front of Souza. The Twins tied up on Nunez's home run, and we head to the ninth tied at five.
reason to smile this year. He's getting a chance to play on an everyday basis because he's hitting. And he just uh, hit an awfully big home run to tie the game at five. Now we go to the ninth inning. And Kevin Jepson comes in to pitch to the bottom of the Tampa Bay batting order. Seven for ten and save opportunities. Obviously, this is not one of them, but that is kind of the new thing in baseball that the closer, rather than have him sit and wait for the team to score and get ahead, they'll use him in ninth inning tie game situations to extend the game. Well, there's no chance for a save opportunity anymore. If the Twins are score in the bottom of the ninth without the Rays scoring in the top, it's a, it's a win, and so it'll be Souza, Motter, and Beckham for the Rays in the ninth. Casali. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. Casali uh, in to catch a couple innings ago. Off the plate, ball one. Souza, if the Twins win this game, involved in maybe the critical at bat in the fourth inning. Tyler Duffy was struggling. Rays had just tied the game up or come to within one, I should say. There's a fastball in the outside corner. There were runners at first and second, nobody out. And Duffy got Souza to hit into just his second double play of the year. And then got out of the inning with the 4 3 lead. Now swing and a foul tip, one and two. Stop two and two. Jepson's uh, difficulty with his secondary pitches has been uh, well discussed and well documented. It's one of the reasons why the numbers are bloated compared to what they were last year when the Twins got him from the Rays, and he was a key reliever in a pretty good ball club last year. And he misses outside three and two. 30 hits in 22 in the third inning. A 326 opponent batting average. And you mix in a bunch of walks. Well, actually, just six walks in 22 in the third inning, but five home runs. Full count. Driven to the gap in left center field, and that's going to run to the warning track and cut off by Buxton between his legs. And Souza will go to third with a triple. Sousa's got good speed. That ball went to the gap, but the ball ricocheted off the wall, went through Buxton's legs, and that was just enough. Uh, Sousa was gaining momentum as he was approaching second base. He saw it all unfold in front of him, didn't hesitate, easily gets to third base. So, leadoff triple. Well, the pitch was down around the knees. Well, the one thing about Kevin Jepson, I don't think he realized that he's got plenty of fastball. But he rarely throws it on the inner part of the plate. Everything's always away, away, and then his breaking ball's away. Now, Casali, the catcher, and the Twins have the infield in with the go ahead run at third. Half swing and a strike, and Suzuki able to keep the pitch in the dirt, in the dirt area. In the third innings and 15 strikeouts for Jepson. I guess they gave him a double and an error to uh, error Byron to Buxton. Buxton. Okay. Big time block by Suzuki. That pitch landing in front of the left handed batter's box. And again, the inability of Jepson to be able to control the breaking ball. He nearly threw that to the backstop. What happens, and we talked about it the other day with Kevin Jepson on the mound, when you cannot control your secondary pitch, hitters will just spit on that, knowing that you can't throw it for a strike, and just wait for that fastball. They have better plate coverage coverage when you're looking only for one pitch. And on the outside corner, 
well witness the Sousa at bat. Yeah. That wasn't a bad fastball, but Sousa's gearing up for it and he knows it's coming. Just a question of putting a good swing on a good pitch. That fastball Fox tracks had off the plate. I just wish he would throw that fastball on the inner half of the plate and maybe off the plate on the inner part. Oh, Suzuki with another fantastic block on a breaking ball in the dirt. And that was so far outside, there's no way Kasali would even offer it. Well, both Suzuki and Jepson know that they have to throw the breaking ball, so they keep coming back with it. But you're going to hardly ever get a guy to chase when it's that far away. Now, he spikes his curveball. You could see by his grip there. Two and two to Casale. There's one closer to the strike zone, but still ball three. And so even Casale probably knows that a fastball is coming here. Bill Hughes warming up in the bullpen. As Jepson's going to try to pull a rabbit out of his hat, pitch around a leadoff triple in the ninth or a double with the runner at third and nobody out. Look like a straight change. Casale did a nice job fighting it off. Twins infield playing well in, trying to cut down that runner at third base if there's anything hit right at him. Off the plate, ball four, and Casale draws a walk. And now Beckham will hit. Judson just fighting his command again. Ball clearly off the plate. A bit of a delay here with a conference behind the mound, not involving the pitcher. Nunez, Dozier, and Escobar all having a chat between the mound and second base. Sometimes you'll see a conference on the mound. Well, I think this is about whether or not they're going to throw through. If Casali should try to break and get down to second base, who's going to cover second? Beckham has struck out twice today, 25 strikeouts in 60 at bats. And of course, the infield's still in. Strike one. A lot of looking at each other between the shortstop, second baseman, third baseman. And what Jepson wants more than anything here, now Suzuki will give signs. What Jepson wants more than anything else is to get a strikeout here and go after Mata. Yeah, they need three outs to avoid Longoria, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yes. Strike two on the outside corner, and Beckham disagrees. Beckham has struck out twice. The on deck hitter, Matuk, has struck out three times today. Well, a portion of that baseball did hit a portion of that strike zone. Will Little been quite generous with the outer half of the plate for Kevin Jepson here. Oh and two. And a really good pitch by Jepson there, a 95 mile per hour fastball, and Beckham had all he could do to make contact. I just can't say it enough. If Jepson would just throw one pitch off the plate on the inside corner, they wouldn't get those kind of swings on the ball that's perfect pitch, pitcher's pitch on the outside corner. But if guys are going to dive because they know they'll never challenge him in, you can't expect them not to cover the outside part of the plate. And there he does it again. 
So when you and Bert and everybody else talks about the necessity of pitching inside, you know, naturally, I guess some of us tend to think of it in terms of a starting pitcher. Probably, it's true. More important for relief pitchers in a plug and tie ball game in the late innings. No doubt about it. Beckham's fought off a couple of tough two-strike pitches. And another one. 95 outer half and Beckham flips it foul. Beckham went down swinging in the third, swinging in the fifth, laid down a sacrifice bunt in the seventh. Let's see there. All the shadowed area, everything's away. Breaking ball, bounced foul. So Jepson mixed it up with Beckham, who's now hung in there nicely with four two strike fouls. Another 0 2 to Beckham. Check swing finally got him. High, high, and Beckham couldn't lay off. One down. I'm not sure if that was by design or just a good result, but we're going to see it better here. Kurt Suzuki did not go up, but that ball was way out of the zone up. And Beckham went around. Only called up Franklin will pinch hit here for Mata. Just called up today when Brandon Geyer was put on the disabled list. And a meeting on the mound between Suzuki and Jepson. Geyer put on the disabled list with a sore left hamstring. Now what do you do with the infield here Franklin runs pretty well he wouldn't be an obvious candidate to hit into a double play the twins will back the infield up just a little bit. Yeah, this is halfway They consider that halfway and anything hit hard. At any one of the position players you're going to try to turn to if it's hit hard. If it's not. You've got to check the runner at third before you make a play to first. Outside ball one. Sousa almost certainly though will come home, right? I mean the runner at third has got to try to come home and well, if nothing else, stay out of the double play. I think if, if he's going to come home, it's going to be uh, on contact. He's got to, at the crack of the bat. You're running. Want to know? There's the outside corner. Jepson's already thrown 22 pitches. One and one. Breaking ball off the outside corner. The last couple breaking pitches have been around the strike zone. And Jepson falls off the mound on strike two. A swinging strike, and then Jepson staggered off the Side of the mound. See, it looked like his knee actually touched the ground. His right knee. What happened, I think, there is his push off leg spike got stuck in the clay out there. And that could be a dangerous situation. Two and two. 
Jack to swing three and two. Miller on deck. Franklin, the last bench player available for Kevin Cash. Three and two to Franklin. Ball four, he walked him. So a triple, a pair of walks, a strikeout between the walks. And now barring a double play, the Twins will have to pitch to Longoria here in the ninth inning. But first things first, trying to get Miller out. And here comes Eric Rasmussen. Well, Rasmussen had a I was gonna heck of a that. trip to the mound in the fourth inning. <laughs> Maybe he can <laughs> work some more magic here. I think what he pretty much does is say, what do you want to do here? I, I don't think he's really given that much instruction to the veteran pitchers. I just think he wants to make sure everybody in the infield understands how they're going to pitch the guy at the plate. And uh, hope that maybe he can roll that magical double play ball right now. And again, the ground ball, if it comes, depending on its speed, it might determine what the infielders do with it. Now, Park is playing in front of the runner at first base. In fact, they're staying halfway in here. They call that double play depth, and that's why, because they're hoping that a ball can be hit hard right at somebody, and there'll be plenty of time to turn the double play. Brad Miller runs pretty well. He'll get down that line, so it's going to have to happen quick. On the outside corner. And the way they're playing would suggest that the force play is going to come at home. That they may try to come home and get yeah. the sure out. And if they can get two, so be it. One strike to Miller. Breaking ball, two strikes. Well, at least he's working ahead in the count here. And he's shown the ability to throw the breaking pitch in or near the strike zone. Miller on the day, 0 for 4 with one strikeout. 44 strikeouts and 173 at bats on the year. And Suzuki has to get up out of the crouch, one and two. Now you're looking at the 30th pitch for yeah. Jepson here in this inning. It's a long, tough inning for Kevin Jepson. Still has to figure out a way to get two outs. Trying to get it on one good pitch. To left, retreating as Grossman. Nice catch, but tagging and scoring will be the runner, Souza. So a liner to left and Grossman did a nice job making the catch. But a sacrifice fly for Miller and the Rays are back in front. Oh you pick your poison now do you walk Longoria fill the bases and pitch to Logan Morrison or do you go ahead and try to get Evan Longoria. I'm trying to think I suppose in the first inning when he struck out on a high fastball but. It was the last time Longoria, Longoria swung the bat, didn't hit the ball hard. Ball one. Abad, the left hander, is warmed up, and so if Longoria extends the inning, figures that Longoria will be the last guy that Jepson will face. It's now the 32nd pitch for Jepson this inning. 2 and 0. Oh. I'm not sure it would be in their best interest to go ahead with 2 and 0 oh to count. Just go ahead and walk him and let Abad try to get out at, uh, Morris. Again, off the plate, three and zero. Oh. And 
as hitters always do when they're locked in. Longoria refuses to chase. You want to throw me a strike? Throw me a strike. Took on three and zero. Oh. Thirty fifth pitch coming up for Jepson. Getting started with a triple or excuse me a double and an error charged to Buxton. Advancing Sousa to third base. And he got him to chase three and two. Full count to Longoria. And a base hit to left on a breaking ball. Grossman charges, firing home, and Longoria this time with a single drives in another run. The Sali scoring from second base. And a rough inning for Kevin Jepson as he gives up a double and a walk to the first two men. They both come around to score. Will be the end of the day for Jepson. Came into a tie game with the Rays, scoring at least two here in the ninth. Two men still left the board. Jepson will check out, and Abad will try to get Logan Morrison. Seven to five, the Rays in front. We'll tell you about Fernando Abad when we come back. Threatening to take the final three games of this series. And uh, Evan Longoria, a big part of the destruction here with an RBI single. He's also homered twice, walked and scored. Fernando Abad will try to keep this game somewhat within reach. Yeah, he's there to get out Logan Morrison, the left hander, right now, right in this situation. But what a series for Evan Longoria. Superheroes coming at, and I think there's a lot of raised fans that are children that are just going to put his face on some of those. <laughs> well, here's Morrison. He's hit two home runs today. The run scored here in the ninth inning is important as they are. Break a string of 13 straight runs for the Rays in this series that have scored on home runs. One strike, a bod with a breaking ball on Morrison. Side. And I'll bet you Jepson will tell you after the game if someone were to ask him that uh, the 
double by Souza in the air, of course, unfortunate, but that walk to Casali. When you got a guy who isn't hitting much. And uh, he reached instead of making the first out. And then Beckham did finally strike out. Franklin, the pinch hitter, walked. And uh, twins still aren't off the field. Two and one. And missing the corner down and away. Now three and one. Rays have scored in innings two, four, six, eight, and nine. And while the Twins or the Rays have scored seven runs so far, left just four. There's a breaking ball and a strike. The twins have scored five times and have left 11 men on. Go lifted to left center field. Grossman chasing it. And he's there for the catch. Two runs against Kevin Jepson in the top of the ninth. The Twins will try to answer in the bottom. The Nunez home run in the eighth inning brought the Twins into a tie at five, and now they'll try to come back again in the bottom of the ninth. And it is Alex Colome who will try to get his third save in as many games. 42 pitches over the last two games came in to face one batter and get the save last night or yesterday afternoon, and had to fight through a difficult Friday night appearance facing 10 batters. First man up is Robbie Grossman, who has walked twice, struck out, and homered. And a fastball strike one. We always talk about that extra insurance run, and that extra insurance run in this case was the guy you're talking about, Kurt Casale, who walked to get on base, came around to score. One and one. Jennings now in center field. Yeah, Franklin and went out. Franklin to left. is in left. And a high fly to center. 
and the shortstop Miller out and he'll make the catch in front of Jennings one away. Time now for what's next brought to you by Century Link a day off tomorrow and then the Twins open up a series against the Miami Marlins and I will pay you Jack Morris one dollar for every time I call them the Florida Marlins. <laughs> And you can donate that to the charity of your choice. Could be a substantial uh, amount, of money. amount of money by the end of the series. And now a little flare to left. Miller going out, and he makes the catch on Escobar's little pop up. Two quick outs, and I was going to say before Grossman hit his fly ball that the best thing the Twins could do would be to make Colome work hard, make him face five, six batters in the inning. Now he's got two quick outs and it's up to Kepler to keep the game alive. Kepler and if he does keep the game alive. Arce is in the on deck circle. Strike on the outside corner. Colome has done his part he's thrown strikes. And got two quick outs with. Now five pitches thrown in his third straight outing. Brad Boxberger led the American League in saves last year. He was hurt, came back through 16 pitches in one outing, left with an oblique strain. They don't expect to get him back anytime soon. And Colome has been perfect in save opportunities in his absence. On the outside corner, and Kepler doesn't like it. One and two. One of the reasons he's such a good closer, he's had a put away pitch. Missing inside to Kepler, two and two. Kepler has walked a couple of times today including uh, an intentional walk in the seventh inning and that strategy worked perfectly for the Rays because Suzuki then struck out and Buxton hit one off the end of the bat back to the pitcher. Two and two to Kepler. And Kepler strikes out and the Rays win the final three games of this four game series. Tom Hanneman this homestand not getting off on the uh, right foot for the twins it looked good on Thursday night but now the Rays have recovered from their losing streak to start a winning streak. You're right Dick a series that started with promise ends with three disappointing losses and the 40th loss of the season for the twins up next on twins live we'll talk about what a weekend for Longoria and Morrison both had two home runs today Byron Buxton solid day at the plate we'll hear from Paul Molitor.